to talk about animals today. So my encapsulation, my abstraction of an animal is something like this. To me, an animal uh, having the, the root, I, we just wrote this thing, uh, I just wrote this uh, copy constructor and copy assignment just for the heck of firing messages to see if things are copied or not. We can just remove it. That's not, that's, that's not what I'm interested in. This is not the focus of my, my attention. So here is just, just for review. So um, yeah. So these are these two are just for review. We don't need to have the copy construct and copy assignment because this is this doesn't have classes. This doesn't have any resources outside of its state. But I just wrote them so you can actually put messages in there and using the external debug. Uh, thing that I have, you can print out the messages. Anyways, my encapsulation, my abstraction of an animal is a creature that has a name and it can act, move, or make a sound. So to me, that's an animal. And I'll want to look at an animal like that. Uh, of course, I need to see what the animal's name is, and that's what this query is doing at line 12. And I need to be able to set the name of the animal to whatever I want at line 13. So if I look at the code for this animal thingy of mine, again, it's just a sample thingy, so I see how it works. So what I do in my constructor, which uh, has a default value called nameless, so it creates a default constructor for it, too, because it has a default value for the, argu for the argument. Um, I am setting the name, and I am saying uh, creating whatever the animal. So if I create an animal called Fluffy, I'm going to have cl creating Fluffy the animal. It's going to actually show me that. The copy constructor and copy assignment is just for you to uh, return and pass stuff by value to practice. It has nothing to do with my example. That I want to do. So ignore the copy constructor and copy assignment. We don't care about those. Those are not the center of my attention. And when I am uh, uh, creating an animal, I'm copying the value. When I'm setting the name of the animal, I'm, I'm copying the value that is coming in for the name, and I string copy it into name. It is in my utilities. That's the name of my global utility uh, uh, um, object. UT, and when an animal acts, I simply say act like animal, move like animal, or sound like animal. And the destructor is going to tell me that the animal is gone, removing whatever the animal, OK? Uh, are we OK with this? Very simple thing. So if I go to main over here, this was to show when I when I pass stuff, so that show animal thing, he simply re receives uh, reference of an animal and then shows it. I did it like this, so you can remove the reference over here and see how it gets copied, what happens if it's passed by value. So it doesn't do anything particular. Again, that's not my interest um, right now. My interest is just uh, to show that uh, an animal is created and that's it. So, so when I actually... And let's, let's remove these two. I, I don't need them. Use those things and play with the code and see what happens. So I am just creating an animal called Buffy, and I'm going to ask the Buffy to act, move, and make a sound. And then Buffy, the animal, is going to die at the end when the scope is over. So the output of the, the, the execution of this program works as follows. Oh, with an error. Let me see what is there. Seriously, with one thing. Uh, what does it say? Oh, <laughs> I have to set it because um, I created this thing. It has nothing in it, <laughs> and I added the, the, the project. So this one, unlike other things that you have, is a solution with several projects in it, okay? So I have to set that at startup project. So I'm going to set that at startup project and uh, redo it. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, so let's put this one over here and take this one over here and walk through it. So main is created over here, and because the bug flag is true, the bug flag is true. It when I say uh, animal equals to Buffy, assignment at the moment of creation is a call to one argument constructor. Therefore, it goes over here, and the name, first name, will be assigned to to null because it's initialized in the class's body. If I had something in initialization area, that would be the second thing. But in this case, that's the first one. So it's kind of a review of what we know. And then it comes back over here. And the name that is passed Buffy will be set in the name of the animal using the modifier uh, method that I have by copying that value inside the, the name. And uh, when I bring my mouse over string copy, Why is it not showing? Where it's supposed to show? It's not. I don't know. Anyways, so it copies. Now, a name is Buffy. And then after we get out of here, uh, it's going to say creating Buffy the animal and comes out. And now I'm asking the animal to act, move, make a sound, and end of main happens over here. And after that, Buffy the animal will be removed from the system, from the, from the memory because the destructor will be called. Are we all okay with this little cutesy program of mine? All right. So, now that I have this animal created, I want to create a cat for myself. If I want to create a cat, cat is an animal. And cat being an animal should act should make a sound and should move exactly like an animal but a cat has one extra thing that animal doesn't have anybody knows what is that am i recording this yes i am okay yeah anybody tell me what an animal has uh, what a cat has that animals doesn't have Nine lives. It has number of lives. Yeah. A cat has number of lives. Thank you. So if I want to actually create a cat, I have to say cat is an animal, which means it gets all the feature of the animal, name, act, everything that it has, but it has number of lives too. And if we keep killing the cat, <laughs> it's going to get reduced, right? So we need to know how many lives it has. So that's why I'm going to create the cat like this. Uh, so my cat is now, so animal is animal. As you see, I removed all the extra stuff. And also, oops, no, don't see that, don't look at that. And also, I brought the name and uh, the two names in the private part, because really, when you have an animal, so I corrected my base animal like that. When you have an animal, you name the animal, and that's it. You don't change the name of the animal. You can see, and you can never ask a horse, what is your name? <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. You have to actually see the documentation and stuff, see what the name is. So um, you name something, and you remember it. You cannot get it. That's why I put those things as private over there. So doing that, I'm creating a cat now. And if I look at the cat, a cat is an animal. So this is the syntax of inheritance. So I'm saying create a class cat, which is publicly getting everything from animal. This public is the only thing you're going to deal with. No other thing for our pay grade, <laughs> for richness of blood goes other than that. So public is the only thing we are learning. So I'm saying a cat is an animal with nine lives. How many lives? I don't know. With number of lives. Okay. And by default, I set the number of lives to nine, as, as my friend mentioned. Already. And I would say, if you don't name my cat, it's going to be Garfield. Anybody knows who's Garfield? OK. One person knows. <laughs> no, nobody's uh, as old as I am? No? All right. So and as you see in here, I have an act for my cat, and I have a sound for my cat exactly like animal hat. I don't have any moves. And my cat has an additional thing called play. 
So if, first of all, please understand that if I had nothing in here, that was enough for my cat. It would be a silly thing to do. If I had nothing in here, cat would act, move, and sound like an animal, not like a cat. So if you do not mention or do not create any functions that are identical to the parent's functions, methods, the parent methods will be, will be used. No problem. But if you, what we call, overwrite them, so when you create a method that is identical to the parents, we call it overriding parents method. If you create an act for cat, then the act of animal will be completely overwritten and forgotten. So when you ask a cat to act, cat will act like its own routine, whatever it is, okay? This cat doesn't have move, so when you tell to the cat to move, it's going to move like an animal. Because I didn't mention how, so it uses its parents. I tell to cat to make a sound, so cat can say meow, okay? But cat has an additional thing that an animal doesn't have, and that's improvement, and it's a playful thing. So cats can play, while animals don't play. Please don't, uh, <laughs> please don't, uh, uh, criticize my analytics on this. <laughs> it's just an example, okay? So, how do we do this? <clears throat> it's very simple. You just create your cat as it's a regular class, but you have to make sure that the functions match exactly what the, the parent has. If my act over here had an argument, then it wasn't overwrite anymore. What was it? What do you call that? It becomes overload, which means now cat has two acts, one with and one without. So to overwrite the parent's action, you have to create a, a, a method with identical signature to the parents. Okay? So that's that. So now if I come and take a look at how the cat actually does these things, uh, let's take a look at cat. Okay. So remember the initialization area? Initialization area is where you tell to the compiler how you want the animal part of the cat to get created. Because your cat is an animal, it has to build the animal, set the name and all the stuff before adding the number of lives, right? That's what it needs to be done. So how it wants to get created will happen in the initialization area. And it's exactly like initializing its properties. You can either put braces over there or use the exact same syntax and do it this way. It doesn't make any difference. But you are essentially saying that I want the name that is passed for the cat to be passed to the constructor of animal, so animal can set its name the way it's supposed to. An animal will do that. Are we okay with this? No problem with this, right? And then I set the number of lives. Obviously, in here I have a message to show that uh, debug C out as a cat with yada yada. So the constructor of animal is going to say creating an animal. The constructor of cat will add to it as a cat with these many number of lives. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Now, as you see, name over here is not accessible. So if I wanted to say act playful, the name of cat, and print it because I don't have access to it, it wouldn't work. Because it's private, I converted it to private. Remember I told you I, had, I changed it to private? So I'm going to bring that one to public. So I'm going to say, I'm going to bring not the setting, but the query to get the name into the public place. Now everything's going to work properly. Seriously? You're embarrassing me? Should I save it? 
Oh, I put the wrong one. Sorry, that's not the query. This is the query. <clears throat> so as you see in this example that I gave you, now everything is OK. In this example that I gave you, <clears throat> I demonstrate that private properties of parent classes, of base classes, are not accessible to child. It's like you have your father has a Porsche 911, loves that car, I would never allow you to drive it. That's private property of your father. But maybe your mother has a, I don't know, a Lamborghini, and she allows you to do, to do that. So that becomes something that you are allowed. But will they give you that Lamborghini to the neighbor? No. How can we do that? How can, or even your father, if your father wants that Porsche 911 to be driven by you only and not outsiders, what can we do? That's another type of access modifier. We only know private and public. We have another type of access modifier that you can say this is only for family and no one else. That, what we call, that is what we call protected. So if I want this name query that accesses the name that gives access to the name of the animal to only be used by children and no one else, I can write over here protected, protected. And I put it over there. Now, if I do this, the cat that is an animal can use it. But if I go in main and I try to, let me just um, collapse that. There you go. If I go in main and I try to write something like this over here, if I say c.name, it doesn't even give me access. But if I try, you will see that it's going to tell me, hey, what are you doing? This is. It says this is not accessible. Where is it? Yada, 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 yada. It's inaccessible. So name is inaccessible to public. Is it inaccessible? It says inaccessible or, it's get pro it's, or it says protected? It says inaccessible. Okay, so I'm going to use the exact same word. So it's inaccessible to public. but accessible to derived classes, OK? Because of that, and as you see in cat, I do not need to mention whose name, because it's the parent, and I'm not overriding it. When you say name, it will pick up the animals. Remember, all the methods and properties of animal will be brought into the child, into the derived one. Those who are private are indirectly accessible. So the animal has to use queries and stuff like that to access them. But everything that is public can be used in the animal. Now, act as you see over here is completely overriding animals. So when I actually run the program and I say, <clears throat> OK, again, I made a boo-boo, which is I have to set this to be startup. Oh, cat is startup. Good. So let's run it. So when I actually run it, of course, it creates, as you see, it creates uh, Fluffy the animal. Let's go through it step by step. So when it actually runs, it comes to the constructor. The name is passed over here. The name is passed over here as Fluffy. But before the constructor of cat is going to be called, it has to initialize its parts. We know that. So what it does first, it passes that fluffy to the animal's constructor. Therefore, constructor of animal will actually set the name to fluffy. Now the name is fluffy. And then it sets the number of li li lives to nine. And then the constructor starts working the way it's supposed to, which results of printing. So this is the constructor of animal uh, running. And then the constructor of the cat runs and says, as a cat with five lives. OK, so this cat's been 
it four times before. All right? So now that we do this, let's look at what happens when different types of, and I create a reference to it, and it's the same thing, no difference. You can, you can create a reference, nothing happens. You just create a new name for it. Um, it's just an example that I put over there. But when we are acting, as you see, it comes over here and says, act playful, uh, fluffy the cat. There is no sign of the parent's uh, action over here. And when I ask cat to move, because move is not implemented in cat, it will go directly to animal and it says move like an animal. Got it? Simple and straightforward. But what if you want to improve the method of the parent? So act completely ignored parent's action and created a new one. Move completely ignored improvement and used the old method. What if I want to use the old action of the parent and add something to it, like the constructor? If you want to do that, you can explicitly call the parent's action using scope resolution. The reason you are using a scope resolution because it's not an object. It's one of your properties, but it's, but it's the animal property of the cat. Therefore, if I want to sound like an animal, as you see in here, I'm going to say the sound of a cat sounds like animal, but it adds a meow. Therefore, this is using the logic of the parent and adds stuff. So three possible ways to uh, override, to, for, for the matter of overriding the, the parent's methods. One, completely override it by creating the exact same method in the child and writing something new. Number two, do not implement anything and let the parent take over so it goes back, does what the parent is supposed to do. Three, is when you use the logic of the parent and you add something to it. And remember, this is scope resolution. Anytime you want to access a class's method, so if the class name is at left, you have scope resolution. If you have an object at left, you have the good old dot that comes from C language. Okay? So in here now I'm saying go and call the sound of animal. Therefore, it's going to say sound like animal and then it says meow. So they're both happening, uh, uh, so it's actually getting improved. And obviously, uh, uh, the other one is not overriding, it's just adding a new feature. I'm adding a play method to cat that the, uh, the animal doesn't have. And that's the case. So it, in here, it's going to actually uh, say Fluffy the cat is playing. But what happens? when it goes out of scope, when the cat does, dies, what happens? Building, inheriting a class out of an already existing class is like creating a story over a one-story building. So you already have one, one story, one, flat, one floor, and you build the second floor or the first one. When it gets demolished, first the top one goes, then the bottom. Okay? So that's what happens. So now, in here, when it wants to get destroyed, because, I'm, because the destructor of cat is called, first cat will go away, and then the animal part of the cat will go away. But they will both go away. All right? It's very bad thing to use the word both, because there is no both. It's one thing. It's one cat. But because cat is an animal, I have to use that terminology. Remember, there are no two objects here. It's one object, it's a cat, and that cat is an animal. So remember, is a relationship? That's the one. Has a relationship is the integer number of lives. So if you want to explain what a cat is and how does it work, you have to say cat is an animal that has number of lives. So has always mean property, means attribute. 
Is means inheritance. All right? Is means inheritance. Has means uh, property. Are we okay down to this point? And that's the syntax for it. So, oh, so and that's protected, so we know exactly. So in here now, um, uh, the animal chooses to have setting of the name to be private because it's only using it it's, it's in its own constructor, but accessing the name is allowed only for children and no one outside. So if somebody wants to know what is the name of the animal, animal will act, and then in the act, the name is, appears, whatever. Okay? Are we okay down to this point? Yes, please. No, because the default value of the constructor of cat sets the name to Garfield, Garfield will be passed to the, to the animal. So animal will be Garfield. Let, let's, let's do it. Let's do it and, and, and walk the best ways to walk through it so, so I can answer you by execution. So in here I have, and in here I'm going to have cat G. Okay? Simple, right? So, and in here I'm going to say G dot sound. Oh, no, it's uh, G, dot, uh, G dot act. Act is good? Yeah, why not? Sure. Okay, so now when I run the program, because G is... Uh, okay, I have to first stop it. Sorry. And recompile and rerun. All right, so now this we know how it creates, but when we come over here because it's defaulted, the name over here will be Garfield, correct? So Garfield is passed to animal. Okay? So I'll, I'll, tell, I'll show you how, how it could be different, okay, in two seconds. All right, so are we okay down to this point? All right. I have this code in, diff like in different projects, so you can actually play with it, okay? So go home and remove stuff and see what happens. Just to show you, for example, if I created a cat like this, so I would say, I'm not going to put a default constructor for this, okay? I w I'm not going to put default values for those, but I, it's, these monitors have to jump up and down. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually create a default constructor separately. So in here, I'm going to say cat and just default it, right? Let's create the code for that. So now in the default constructor, I can choose what I want to do. If I just leave it and don't write anything, the default constructor of the uh, of the parent will be called. And in here I can say uh, number of lives is nine. And in here I'm going to say C out uh, defaulting cat uh, as a cat. As a cat with, as a defaulted cat. with uh, m number of lives. So, so I can actually, I, you can either put it over here or put it up here. It doesn't make any difference. But at top, it's initialized. At bottom, it's, it's, it's set. So I like to always initialize it. Number of lives. So in here, I'm going to put 9. And I'll do it like that, OK? So now I'm not mentioning how I want the parent to get created, all right? So because I am not mentioning it when it actually gets created, so uh, let's, let's run the program and uh, see what happens when G is actually called. Is it running still? All right. 
So it comes over here. We know how this is created. There is no problem. But when I'm defaulting the cat, the cat, it comes to the default constructor. It obviously goes to animal. But animal will now have nameless because the default constructor of animal is called. Obviously, obviously, and says a defaulted cat. Obviously, you can instruct the constructor which constructor of animal should be called when it's defaulted. For example, you don't want it to be nameless. When it's a cat, you want to make it no cat, whatever. Or you want to make it Garfield, whatever. Okay, so if I wanted a cat being defaulted to be Garfield, I can say over here animal and put over here Garfield. And now when a cat is defaulted, the animal will be Garfield. This is an important thing to realize. In the constructor of a child, in a constructor of a derived class, you can choose which constructor to be used to create the base, to create the parent. But nevertheless, a constructor of parent will be called. You have no choice over it. The biggest mistake that a rookie programmer does is this. It says, OK, I want to set the animal to Garfield. This is what I'm going to do. Oh, yeah. So what's going to happen now? When I do something like this, what is going to happen? Is it going to give me a syntax error? No. What's going to happen is that cat is going to get called, and the animal part of the cat will be defaulted. It will be nameless. Then at line 29, a nameless animal called Gar uh, sorry, a nameless object with name Garfield will be getting created, and 29.5 it will die. So you are not setting the cat. You are just creating a temporary nameless animal. Remember, you cannot call a constructor. Remember that. You cannot call a constructor. Attempting to call a constructor creates a temporary nameless object. Let's demonstrate that. So if I actually run this, I'm not going to get an error. But when you are actually coming in here, as you see, because I didn't mention how the animal is supposed to get created, the animal will be nameless, as the default constructor of animal is. Then it comes in here, copies and does all the good stuff it's supposed to do. And it creates nameless animal, as you see. OK? Then it comes in here creates an animal with the name Garfield, and then after it creates it, immediately kills it. So this has nothing to do with your object. This is a huge mistake. Never think that you can actually call a constructor to set an object. If you want, you can ask for, his, for, its, inv for its invoking in the initialization area. OK, so this attempt, I'm going to write over here. This attempt will not set the current object. Object, but only creates a temp animal with the name. Garfield and kills it right away, right after. OK? So if you want a nameless animal to be Garfield, you have to bring that in the initialization area. And always remember that. The initialization area or the sequence must be done the way you have. So first, the parent, then the properties in the order that you have in your uh, 
in your class. So if in your class you have three properties, three attributes, and you have the animal, first you initialize the animal, then you initialize the three properties in the same sequence. You cannot shuffle them, okay? Different compilers won't compile. If you take it to uh, matrix, it, it will complain, all right? Probably, it's, I think it's gonna give you an, a warning or something, or I don't know, error, I don't remember, but it's, it's not gonna work, okay? So are we okay with this? Do we understand it? All right. So down to this point, everything is fine and dandy and beautiful, so I have not, no problem over here, but problem comes in when something like this happens. Problem happens when you call an object using its last name. It's like you call me Mr. Solimandu. I'll tell you what happens. Give me a second. <clears throat> so, so animal is the animal, cat is the cat, everything's as it was before, and this one actually has a move too, so um, I uncommented uh, the move, but <clears throat> take a look at what happens when you refer to a cat as an animal, okay? Yeah, a very bad example for it, what kind of relates to it is this. My father was a teacher too. He taught mechanics. So this, just imagine if you called me, say, Mr. Solimandu, wouldn't you please come and teach? I would come and teach you mechanics. If you call me for that, I'll teach you C++. That's what happens in an object-oriented world. If you refer to an object using its parent, it forgets what it was as a child. It acts like a parent. Okay? Got to be careful. And how, yet, how can you refer to a child as a parent using two things, either a reference or a pointer? Okay? So, having said that, let me show you the main in here. Don't worry, there is an easy solution for that. Okay, so, <clears throat> so as you see over here, I have the cat Pepper, and I have an animal pointer which dynamically holds the address of a cat. So this cat, Tom, doesn't even have a cat reference. It, it is born as an animal. It is a cat. But it's born as an animal. It, it doesn't have a cat reference in it at all. Or I can refer to the cat using an animal reference. That is fine too. But what I want to show you is this. So I'm going to say using cat reference, which is exactly what we did before with no difference, right? If I'm using a cat reference, cat is cat, everything's good. Let's take a look and see what happens. And the other one is perfect. So let's actually go through it and see what happens. So when I run the program now, and that's the startup, which is good. We know how the cat works, so I'm not going to go through. Uh, um, I'm not going to walk through the cat part. I'm just going to walk through the uh, the parts that uh, that are they're referred by uh, a reference of uh, of an animal. So when we are actually going through this, the cat is created, and the other one's still a cat, and that proves it. So creating Tom the animal as a cat with nine lives. So we know that. AP, the animal pointer, is actually pointing to a cat, for sure. Then what do we do? So it acts like a cat, moves like a cat, and sounds like a cat, right? Now I'm going to come over here and say, and this is the exact same thing, right? So. I wish I had something else over here, so, yeah, fine. So now it comes over here. Now I'm going to say animal reference cat act. So as you see the AR, we know 
it is pepper because the reference is the reference of pepper. But when it actually ca called, it goes to the animal and it acts like an animal. There is no cat anymore. It completely forgets that it was a cat. Completely. And worse, when you point there, when you use the pointer, you don't even have access to the cat. At least in the previous version, what I did, I used the cat reference and I called the pepper with the cat. So it acts like cat. But when it comes over here, as you see, when it comes over here, it will actually act uh, like, a, like an animal. So there is no cat. It's a complete waste. Worse than that, when I say delete the animal pointer, which I had no cat reference to, the pointer only sees the animal part of the cat, removes the animal from memory, and cat remains in memory. It causes memory leak. Take a look. Removing Tom the animal. Well, when actually the program is terminated, Pepper is removed properly because it was automatically created as a cat. Now my program has memory leak, and that's bad. How do we fix that? How do we guarantee that if a pointer is pointing, if a pointer of a parent is pointing to a, to a child, the latest version of the functions are called, no matter how it's referred to. I want you to call me Mr. Solimandu, and I still teach C++. It doesn't make sense. That's incorrect if you call me in a different way. I switch the way I teach. That's not what happens in real life, right? We want these things to be upgradable. Sometimes you don't want to. Sometimes there are things that you don't want to upgrade. You want to say, if I'm referring to a, to a cat, if I am dealing with a cat like a cat, the pet it is, I want it to actually uh, walk and move and sound like a cat. But if it's an animal, I want it to walk like an animal. So therefore, I want the movement of cat not to be improved, for example. You can do that. You know how, right? Just leave it as is, and that's what happens. But if you want to guarantee that if an upgrade exists, the upgrade is used instead of the original, all you need to do is to come to the base and say, this is not the real destructor. If it's an upgrade, upgrade is the real one. If I create an animal, this virtuality has no meaning because it's an animal, see? In here, I come over here and I create an animal. So I'm going to create an animal, a Simba, OK? So I have an animal. If an animal is created, I have no problem. It doesn't make any difference for it. But because here an animal pointer is pointing to a cat, when it comes to destroy it, it says, hey, this object is not the same. Look there is, if there is an updated version of this destructor. Yes, there is. Who's the destructor? The cat. So it goes, destroys the cat, therefore everything is deleted. Take a look. By adding just that virtual thingy over there, what happened? Stop. Okay, do it again. So now, it compiles exactly the same. So. When I create, so it creates the cat and it creates the animal, right? So everything is working perfectly. And as you see, these are not up upgradable and everything uh, is acting like an animal. But when it comes to delete, because the destructor of animal is virtual, the latest version is called because animal pointer is pointing to a cat. Therefore, when it's deleted, it goes to cat's destructor now and the whole thing is deleted, not only the animal. But of course, when I have an animal just by itself, then the animal dies because there is no upgradable version over there. So 
Remember, virtuality, the keyword virtual, only comes to play when you have a parent's pointer or reference pointing to a child. Other than that, you can ignore the virtuality. So I want, I want, for example, the act to be upgradable. All I need to do is to go to the animal and I say act is virtual. If I do that, you see over here, Tom is acting like an animal. Pepper is acting like an animal. If I rerun this code now, oh. if I rerun this code now, you will see now Pepper is acting like cat and Tom is acting like cat. Because now when it's actually coming to call the act, it looks is the object that I have an animal or a cat or a child of an animal? If it's a child of an animal, does that child have the action? If it does, then it improves it. Obviously, if I make, for example, I'm making move over here virtual. I'm making move virtual. And when I do this, obviously all the updates, all the things are going to be updated to to, and now everything is moved like a cat, right? But if cat doesn't implement it, then that virtual is pointless. So if cat actually doesn't have a move, that virtual is not wrong, but nothing's going to happen. So if I come to this cat thingy and I remove the move, it's not an error. But because there is no newer version of move, it remains like the animal. Cat is virtual and has an upgrade. The upgrade is called. Move is virtual, doesn't have an upgrade. Therefore, the parent is called. And uh, sound is not virtual at all. Therefore, no matter what you do, the parent's going to get called. If pointer or reference of a parent is pointing to a child. And that is virtuality. Are we OK with this? All right. OK, so, and that was actually the introduction. I'm not going to, I'm going to remove everything from here. Just, you heard it from me. But let, should I let it be? Let me, let me, let me remove the changes in here and bring the other one. The problem is that with virtuality comes an amazing polymorphic behavior, real polymorphic behavior. Just imagine that I have a class called animal. And out of that animal, I have a bird, a cat, and a dog. And I create an array of animal pointers. In first one, I create a bird. In second one, I create a cat. And in third one, I create a dog. I put that animal in a loop. And I say first animal. So in a loop, I say animal zero, sound. Animal one, sound. Animal two, sound. So when you look at the syntax, all the animals are making a sound. What the execution is, the first one's going to tweet, the second one's going to meow, the third one's going to woof. So absolutely different execution with the exact same signature. An object will do what it's supposed to do regardless of what the function is. Always the latest version is called. Now, interview question. You're going to go for a co-op stuff. You're going to go for some place, and they're going to ask you this question, this question. What is virtuality? What is a virtual method? The answer is short form. The virtuality guarantees that the latest version of a method is called done. That's textbook answer. You can add this phrase at the end. You can say virtuality guarantees that the latest version of the method is called in the hierarchy of inheritance. That makes it a little confusing, but same thing. So obviously, when you say virtual, you have uh, inheritance. As I mentioned, if there is no inheritance, virtuality can be completely ignored. One rule you have from now on till the last day you do C++ programming, from now on, 
at any moment of time. If you create a destructor, that destructor must be virtual no matter what. Why? Because if in future your class is inherited to a new class, that virtuality guarantees there is no memory leak. If you don't do that, then there will be memory leak. So it is standard by all C++ programmers. It's as if it's engraved in their DNA. When you create a destructor, you always make it virtual because it wouldn't hurt. If there is no inheritance, that virtual doesn't mean anything. But if there is inheritance, you're not going to have memory leak in any case. Are we OK with this? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? All right, so let me correct the thing and bring the next thing in. Um, so um, I'm going to pause. The thing that I have to mention about virtuality is that virtuality is transitive, which means if I have a parent, a child, and a grandchild, when parent has a virtual function, okay, even if nothing is mentioned, the child's function of that one will be virtual too, even if it doesn't have a keyword virtual. And the grandchild's going to be virtual too, and so on and so forth. So virtuality begins at some place, and everything else automatically become virtual, even if you don't mention it. But it's a good idea to add the keyword just to remember. If you don't add it, as you see, I'm not adding it to the cat. But later on, if after, like if I, if I had an animal, feline, and a cat, then everything would have been virtual all the way through. So going for the cat, I'm going to have const over here added just to make sure that I am overriding. Otherwise, it wouldn't override. And then I'm going to give you the example that actually tells you, uh, explains something that we are doing throughout the semester and that magic happens, and uh, nobody knows why. And this is the reason for it. So in here, this is where I was doing the tickle thingy. So I said, if you tickle an animal, so in here I'm going to say constant animal reference A. And in here I'm going to say A dot, uh, A dot sound. OK? In uh, whatever. I'm going to say lame, but hey. OK, so, <clears throat> so if I do something like this, the amazing thing about it is that I can say over here, um, I can say over here, tickle. That's not the end of main. This is the end of. So I'm going to say, so in here I have <clears throat> an animal. That is A, and I have a cat that is P, correct? In here, I'm going to say tickle. Did I put it capitalized? Seriously? I put a function capitalized? Started programming yesterday, I think. OK, tickle. So I go tickle. In here, I'm going to say A to tickle the animal. And tickle, in here, I'm going to go uh, P. Uh, was it P for the cat? Did I put P? Why did I put P? It's probably for pepper. So as you see, I am calling the tickle for both. But because tickle is receiving a reference of tickle is receiving a reference of an animal, even when a cat is passed to it, did I make the sound virtual? Let me make sure that the sound is virtual, otherwise this thing is gonna not make sense. Uh, Sound is virtual. Good. So now, when I run the program, let's actually run it right to the stop thingy. So it stops at tickle. So it runs and stops at tickle. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna tickle a. So when I tickle a, it comes over here. It comes over here, and animal a that is a reference will make a sound that uh, sounds like rat the animal, and it says, ha, 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 right? Now, when it comes over here, I'm going to say tickle P. P is a cat, correct? And it's now passed in here, but it's referred to by an animal. Because sound is virtual, it's going to sound like a cat. 
So mew sounds like pepper the animal, right? And then does ha ha ha. So I do not need to care what I pass to tickle. As long as it's animal, it's going to sound properly. That's why I ask you to overwrite iStream and OStream. Then I print and read files with it. You have seen all my testers. I ask you to overwrite OStream, and then I extract from a file instead of a CN. How does it work? Because iOS is the parent, OStream is the child, and OFStream is the grandchild. So when you print on a screen, and I print on a file, because the action of extra, uh, insertion is virtual, the latest version is called. Therefore, file is going to write pro pro properly. And this is how everything works in C++. When you make things virtual, always the latest version is called. All right? Anyway, so that's that. And that's uh, the lecture for today. Any questions? Suggestions? Yes. Uh, yeah, so there are things. For example, well, again, stupid answer, but let's say when you talk to someone with their last name, they act formally, right? When you are in first name place versus it's casual, correct? So let's say your parents' action is formal, your action is casual. Therefore, when I call you with your last name, because action is not virtual, you're going to ask act, act formally. If I call you with your first name, you're going to act, act casually. Sometimes you don't want to make a method virtual because you want the child to act like a parent if it's referred to you as a, if referred to it as a parent. If that's your business logic, then you shouldn't. Again, there's a downside for it. It's not a downside. It's a matter of design. Do you need this method to be upgraded or you don't want it? If the method by design craves to be upgraded, you make it virtual. If the method is supposed to be what it is and you want to enforce that it will never change and act always the same way, you don't make it. But does the downside to make it virtual? I don't know. It depends on your design. Did I answer the question or made it worse? <laughs> okay. All right. Are we okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want In the, it has to be in a header file, right? All the virtuality happens in a header file because I wanted the move to be upgradable. That's all. So in here, <clears throat> oh, I didn't. Oh, you said you didn't make the thing because I just wanted to demonstrate if it's not virtual, the latest one it will not be called. So this enforces. So if I, if I, wanted, to, if I wanted to do this, I'm going to say uh, makes move not upgradable. So this is answer to her question over here, saying that, hey, uh, 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 I do not want the move to be upgraded. I want it to always act out. It's just an example. All right? Any other question? Suggestion? Objection? All right, so next day, we're going to start from virtuals again, which is next week, OK? And I'm going to stop.